So there is this new app called TikTok and everybody is talking about it and I have no idea what it is. I guess it must be good. Let's check it out. Why do you have to keep being a furry a secret? <laughs> no, no. Well, so much for content besides Battlefield. I'm sorry guys, I tried. Let's stick to what I can do best, which is another worst to best ranking video. So in today's video, we're gonna rank every single vehicle in Battlefield 1 from worst to best. And yes, I mean every single vehicle. Basically everything besides the behemoths since we already did that. So let's just dive straight into the list. The worst vehicle in Battlefield 1, and keep in mind that I rank these on how effective they are and what they're doing their potential, so how deadly they are in the right hands, and how important they are in an average game. So the first vehicle on the list is the sidecar. Now obviously this is not really a surprise, as this vehicle doesn't really have any purpose besides getting from point A to point B in a quick manner. You do have the option to roadkill people, which is absolutely hilarious, but overall you are exposed and the vehicle physics in Battlefield 1 make it so that fast moving vehicles are hard to control, so that's why I rank it the worst. Next up on the list we have the regular jeep. Obviously you have different variants for different factions, but I mean the regular non-armored car. The reason why I rank it one spot above the sidecar is because 1. It has more health, 2. It has one extra seat compared to the sidecar, and 3. It has a mounted machine gun. So it's basically just an upgrade from the sidecar, but overall there are far more useful vehicles in this game. Up next is basically yet again another upgrade, the armored truck. This thing is actually pretty damn useful in certain situations. First of all it's armored so it has way more health, everybody inside the car is not exposed because of the armor and all occupants have a machine gun to fire which is pretty neat. Though one good tank shot and everything blows up instantly. The next vehicle on the list is the Y Lighter Landing Craft. This vehicle has this spot on the list not because it has such an amazing amount of offensive power, because it doesn't, it has two machine guns on the side and that's about it. The purpose of this vehicle is to bring a big number of infantry to land across a big body of water. What's even better is the fact that this vehicle also serves as a mobile spawn point. On maps like Albion, the Y Lighter Landing Craft is extremely useful. If you manage to flank the enemy from behind, your whole team can basically spawn on this vehicle without capturing any objectives. So a lot of people are sleeping on this vehicle when it's actually pretty damn useful. Next up is yet another naval vehicle, the torpedo boats. I gotta be honest, the only reason why the torpedo boats are remotely useful is because of the Turning Tides DLC. In this DLC we got introduced to naval warfare, something that we haven't really seen before in Battlefield 1. In this DLC, L-Class Destroyers and Dreadnoughts are far more present and useful than in other maps. To deal with these threats, the torpedo boats are one of your only options and they are pretty amazing in taking out those other naval vehicles. So they are very effective in what they are supposed to do and they are very important in winning games on maps within the Turning Tides DLC. And that's also the reason why I rank the torpedo boats like this. It's because they serve the most purpose in the Turning Tides DLC, not much else. Speaking of Turning Tides, the next vehicle on the list is also one that is connected to that DLC. In a way that it's only playable on those maps. I'm talking about the C-Class airship. Now in the right hands, this airship can destroy everybody. Like if you have a competent crew that is. If you don't, then well you are most likely going to be destroyed before you have any kills. Firstly, this thing is actually pretty damn agile. The driver has bombs to drop and artillery to call in. The gunner has this crazy powerful cannon and the other two seats have access to an anti-air cannon that's located on top of the airship and another automatic cannon with explosive shells. So if your crew works together this thing can be amazing like I said. The big downfall though of the C-Class airship is the fact that it's a sitting duck and the amount of health it has which is not that much. That's why it's ranked relatively low. Now all the vehicles from this point forward are actually pretty decent and these are obviously the more commonly chosen vehicles in Battlefield 1. So with that in mind, let's continue with the list. But first, do you have nightmares about this happening to you? System breach, oh. firewall one. We got a problem. What? Someone synced a rat to one of my servers, a remote access tool, we're being hacked. <laughs> Imagine getting hacked and getting all your personal documents, images and search history data leaked on the internet for everybody to see. This could happen to you. Well don't worry because today's video is sponsored by NordVPN. NordVPN is a virtual private network company that ensures your security while browsing the web. Whether you're doing something iffy or not, NordVPN offers you to serve the web anonymously with no data logging and using military grade encryptions. Which basically means it's really really secure. 
You can get 66% off a two year plan by using the code TBAG at nordvpn.org slash TBAG. It's available in over 60 countries from the USA to Japan. So if you want to watch some weird exclusive Japanese tentacle anime anonymously, you can. Still not entirely sure? Just give it a try. You have 30 days to get your money back guaranteed. So that's nordvpn.org slash teabag. Be safe on the internet and keep these guys at bay. So anyway, moving on with our list. The next vehicle is the Assault Truck, or also known as the Putilov Garfer. Probably butchered the name, but you know which one I mean. So this one is actually the first real offensive vehicle on the list. It belongs to the tank category, and to be honest, I don't really like it. Firstly because it's an assault truck, so like the artillery truck, the amount of health it has isn't that great. The offensive capabilities are pretty decent as it has a very powerful cannon and you can throw AT grenades out of the top hatch. But then again, that is ruined because of this vehicle's weird design. The turret is placed on the rear of the truck and it can be faced forward. So close range battles are really awkward because if you want to look to the left or the right, you have to turn the whole turret around from the other side. There is a way to counter this and that is to drive backwards the entire time. Which is doable, don't get me wrong, but it feels counterintuitive and at that point you have plenty of other tanks that can do the job just fine. The next vehicle on the list is not really a vehicle, it's the horse. And to be honest it was kind of difficult to rank the horse because it's more of a hybrid between an infantry and a vehicle. Some of the perks that the horse has are obviously its increased health, its mobility and the fact that it can dish out damage against infantry as well as enemy armor. Another big plus is that if you or your titanium horse are low on health, you can heal yourself very quickly. The downside of the cavalry unit is that compared to the vehicles, it's obviously very vulnerable. Because unlike the other vehicles on this list, the horse can be damaged with normal weapons. So if a whole enemy squad is ganging up on you, you need to get the hell out of there. Also one small collision with an enemy tank means an instant death. The next vehicle is another tank, it's the land ship. And the reason why I rank it as one of the lowest out of the tanks is because in order to release the land ship's full offensive capabilities, you need to play with a good crew who knows what they are doing because the driver of the land ship doesn't really have that much firepower. The main firepower comes from the two gunners. So don't get me wrong, with the right crew, this thing can obliterate the enemy team, but because it can only do that with two other capable crew members, I rank it like this. The next vehicle is the last naval vehicle on this list, which is the L-Class Destroyer. Like the torpedo boat, the L-Class Destroyer is only really relevant on the Turning Tides DLC. But on those maps, this boat is insane. The driver has access to some of the craziest weapons of any vehicle. An insanely powerful cannon and the ability to call in an artillery barrage. The gunners have access to yet another cannon and torpedo launchers to deal with enemy boats, as well as an anti-air cannon to deal with aircrafts coming too close. Obviously the downside to this vehicle is the fact that it's a boat and therefore limited in its ways. But overall this thing is pretty beastly. The only real counter are the torpedo boats. Next up we have our first plane, which is the bomber, you know the regular one which nobody really uses anymore ever since the heavy bomber came out. But I remember before the heavy bomber, some of the clips that I've seen with this plane were absolutely insane, like spawn killing 10 to 15 people and unlike the heavy bomber, the regular bomber requires some precision when dropping bombs. The pilot's main two weapons are obviously bombs and the rear gunner could deal with enemy aircrafts that could be on your tail and the front gunner has yet again this auto cannon with explosive shells. Pretty beastly if you ask me and it's also way more agile than the heavy bomber so getting out of problem is easier. Up next we have the assault tank, also known as the Saint Germain tank and I don't really know what to tell you guys about this tank. It's a decent tank with decent armor, it has pretty interesting loadouts and it has a lot of room for extra crew. One thing that I found extremely annoying though with this particular tank is the way it moves. Like if you are not stable on the ground, it feels like it's floating or something. It's very strange and very off-putting. But besides that, it's pretty damn good. Also, by the way, look at this legend. Amazing. First time anyone has ever repaired my tank in Battlefield 1. Next up, we have another tank. And this time, it's the light tank. And the reason why I rank the light tank this high is because out of all tanks in the game, this one is the most agile and it is the only one with a 360 degrees rotating turret. That alone gives you so much freedom while in tank combat. So if you have great situational awareness, the light tank can really fit your playstyle and you can go on an absolute tear, though it's not as good as it once was. Remember back in the day, this thing was amazing. Speaking of back in the day, who remembers the golden days of the fighter plane? 
The fighter plane with the trench fighter loadout. Damn, that thing was overpowered. And it actually took DICE long enough for them to nerf it. First of all, the fighter plane is amazing in dogfighting. Obviously, that's the whole point. But for the longest time, the trench fighter loadout was also king in taking out infantry. And I'm taking this into consideration when ranking the fighter plane, and that's why it's ranked so high. There was almost no counter to it, and I remember when playing operations on Monte Grappa, the section with the bunker area was like heaven for the fighter plane. After every battalion, you always saw this one pilot sitting on top of the scoreboard with like 150 kills and zero deaths. It was disgusting. The next vehicle on the list is something that I'm actually quite ashamed of. It's the artillery truck. And yeah, I know, I know, but listen, a couple of days ago I was checking my stats and it turns out that out of all the vehicles from the tank category, I have the most kills with the artillery truck. I know, it's crazy and I'm not a hilltop camper either, let me make that very clear. I just think that the artillery truck, when used offensively, can be the enemy's team worst nightmare. Let me explain, it's fast, nimble, you have a machine gun at your disposal to deal with enemy infantry, and the big artillery cannon to deal with enemy armor. And that artillery cannon also has a zoom option. The only downside is the amount of health the artillery truck has, but in my opinion, the offensive capabilities outweigh that pretty significantly. So now we enter the top 3, and in my opinion, these 3 vehicles are honestly the most deadly in the entire game. So in this spot, which is the number 3 spot, we have the heavy bomber. I think most of you know why, I think most of you have seen some of the most disgusting multi-kill clips with the heavy bomber ever. I don't have any of these clips myself sadly, but I'm sure we all know what I'm talking about. 10 kills, easy. 15 kills, easy. I think I've even seen something like 20 kills in one bombing run if I'm not mistaken. It's because of the cluster bombs. You get 5 of them and they cover such a large area, it's actually harder to not kill an enemy. To top it all off, the heavy bomber has an open seat which lets you repair the plane with a repair tool. So again, if you have one other crew member who can defend you and repair you, then it's pretty much game over. On the number 2 spot, we have the vehicle that I personally have the most kills with. It's the attack plane. This plane is very, very versatile and therefore very, very deadly. Its main cannon can do not only crazy damage against other planes, but also against infantry on the ground. It can also drop bombs which are very deadly against enemy infantry. And to top it all off, it has a rear gunner who can turn 360 degrees. So it can help you get a plane off your tail, or it can assist you in taking out the plane yourself that you are chasing. My best games I've ever had in Battlefield 1 were most likely with this vehicle. And now, for the number one spot on the list, the best vehicle in Battlefield 1, according to me of course, is the heavy tank. I cannot tell you how many times people who were great in the heavy tank top the scoreboard. It's crazy, it has so much health and depending on the loadout it is probably the most powerful vehicle in Battlefield 1. Infantry, no problem, other tanks, no problem and even planes, no problem. Its shape is also something to note because it's so flat you often ricochet your AT rocket gun shells against the heavy tank. Maybe it's just me, I don't know, but I've seen it happen too many times. So there you have it guys, all vehicles in Battlefield 1 ranked from worst to best. If you enjoyed the video then don't forget to drop a like, it really helps the channel out a lot. Subscribe if you haven't already and don't forget to turn on notifications so you never miss an upload. Let me know your thoughts on the list and if you would change it in any way. With that being said, thanks for watching and I see you guys next time.